This is your NXT TakeOver War Game 2018 preview and predictions video. Thank you all for watching this video and tuning in back into the channel. It is me, it is Steve, and literally as we speak right now, as I'm doing this recording, we are dealing with here in New Jersey a freaking snowstorm. This happened out of nowhere. It is crazy how no one in the state literally did not think how crazy this storm would get now, i'm not talking oh my god it's a freaking blizzard and i'm snowed in by no means at all but it's a tough tough situation to drive through right now so if you're living in the new jersey hell even new york and tri-state area right now and you're dealing with this bullshit of, of, of the snow just stay in don't go outside if you got a shovel do i shovel literally all day today I'm tired, but here I am doing this prediction video for you guys. But again, just stay in, drink something hot, hot chocolate, cocoa, get some soup. It is what it is. All right. Watch some Netflix, watch some, you know, the WWE Network or New Japan World, whatever gets you guys excited, whatever. I'm looking at this card right now, and let's be real about it. Yes, you know, takeovers always tend to steal the weekend for WWE. And let's be real about it. This card, this TakeOver War game is no different. Completely no different. And I don't want to come off like the NXT fanboy. I guarantee you every single YouTuber, every single podcaster, they're going to come on here. They're going to tell you how amazing NXT is and how it's better than anything that the main roster gives you. This and whatnot. How NXT is a so-called A show and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to beat it to death like everyone else has done, you know, on this platform or whatever. I can understand why they feel that way because what I like about NXT is this, okay? I like how they just make things so simple. Yes, also they, you know, they they keep the focal point on the small detail that you see, and but at the same time the big majority is again, they keep things so simple. They don't rehash anything. I'll give you the I'll give you the, a good example of rehashing if you will. Again, no one caught this, but it is what it is. Literally this past Tuesday on SmackDown Live, Daniel Bryan beat AJ Styles and Bryan turned heel, right? Became the new WWE champion, right? But yet at the same time, they rehashed what happened the year before when AJ beat Jinder Mahal for the WWE title in Manchester on SmackDown Live, right? And again, it is what it is, but it gets ignored. But again, they rehashed what they did a year before. You would not see something like that on NXT. You wouldn't. I mean, yeah, you can make the argument, oh, you know, Gargano and Ciampa, they were friends, and they're rehashing Zayn and Owens, but they didn't get that. They didn't get that. But the thing with Zayn and Owens, it didn't get that far. But enough about all that. I'm going to give my predictions. I, as always, want to hear from you guys in the comment threads below. Give me your thoughts on what match you look forward to seeing and who do you see winning. Or if not, let me know on Twitter at HeelSteven. A heads up, though, I will be doing a review on TakeOver War Games. Most likely Saturday, but it'll be up on the later side because I get out of work Saturday night at 9 p.m. And I'll come home and I'll probably miss the first hour. So expect a late review for TakeOver War Games on this channel. Also, tomorrow on the Team Hill podcast, myself, Big Mike, and most likely as well, OK Fate, will be doing our Survivor Series predictions and as well, we'll be doing a giveaway on the podcast so again if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe you tune in tomorrow live for the team L podcast we give more details on the giveaway and as well as our survivor series predictions as well so i'm looking at the card there's four matches for takeover war games i understand why because again you know the war games match itself is literally a long match so again let's just have four and again, you know, I, 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 there's not a doubt in my mind that even with four matches instead of five, like the, every usual takeover, it's going to be an amazing show. I won't be high as fuck, but again, it's going to be a fucking amazing show. The show kicks off. I'm, again, I'm going through Wikipedia here, okay? We have Shayna Baszler defending her NXT women's title against Kyrie Sane, and it's being now a two out of three falls match. Uh, as you all know what happened at Evolution, Shayna Baszler did beat Kyrie Sane with help from her. Friends of the Four Horsewomen of Jasmine Duke and Shrina Schaefer. Shrina Schaefer, if I botched her name, I apologize in advance. In other words, Roderick Strong's wife. Okay? And they interfered. It caused Kyrie the championship. And it helped Shayna Baszler become the first woman in NXT to be a two-time NXT Women's Champion. And because of all this, Kyrie Sane decided to invoke her rematch clause. 
for TakeOver War Games in a 2 out of 3 falls match. I'm going to say this too. Last night on NXT, I found it funny as hell, the whole video package, right? And you see Kyrie saying like, oh, my treasure chest is empty. She literally opened the chest and there's nothing in it. I just found that hilarious. You could literally make a meme off that alone. But other than that, you know, we've seen this before. You know, I think this is the this is the blow off match, and it's it. It's time to move on. Um, it should be a fun match. Say what you want. Um, I do. And you think about it too. Like Kyrie Sane wanted this to be at a two out of three falls match because again, oh, you know, she doesn't think that Shayna can beat her twice. But at the same time, it's like, oh, Regal's like, oh, your friends can't get involved and all. But in my mind, I'm like, if you're Kyrie Sane, do you really think that? Jasmine Duke and Sharina Schaefer, they're not going to get involved. Like, come on. How stupid can you really be? That being said, if I'm Kyrie Sane, I would love to see her, hey, you know, come with some reinforcement. Bring in, you know, bring in um, Lo Shirai from the Mayan Classic. Maybe bring in another girl that was also the Mayan Classic as well to level the playing field. But we'll see how that goes as well. But again, it should be a fun match. I'll be keeping 100 with you, too. I don't see them dropping the belt off Shayna Baszler. I think Shayna retains the championship here. And you know what? Honestly, at this point in juncture, you know, there's talks of who's going to replace, you know, Charlotte Flair at you know at Survivor Series, right? Now that, Char now that Charlotte's facing Ronda Rousey. And again, take it for what it's worth. You can have Kyrie Sane be the one to take Charlotte's spot for Team SmackDown. And from there, you know, hey, she can be added to the match and make her way to the main roster. Again, it's a thought. I could be wrong, but I see that possibly happening. But I also see Shayna retaining her championship here. We then go to what I think will be the match of the night, in my honest opinion. Take it for what it's worth as well again. Aleister Black versus Johnny Gargano. Let's keep it real here. The summer 2018 for NXT has all been around Aleister Black and who attacked him, who attacked him. People were saying, oh, it's Tommaso Ciampa. People were saying Cash is Ono. People were saying Lars Sullivan. Nikki Cross knew who it was. She knew. She knew. She had a secret. And it turned out it was Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling, everyone's favorite NXT superstar, the NXT's Daniel Bryan. It's crazy to think that now Gargano and Brian are both heels. Let that, let that marinate for a minute, okay? Let that shit marinate. <laughs> and, you know, the whole thing, Aleister Black wanted answers. He, again, no one saw it coming, it being Gargano, the last, that the last person you thought it would be. And Gargano explained why, because he wanted to face Tomal Ciampa by himself, not with Aleister Black, and Aleister got, got involved. And all this, and again, Aleister wants his revenge. And I think, again, you got, you give these two guys 20 minutes or so. These two guys can go out there and just tear the house down. They definitely can. Again, this could definitely be, again, the, the match of the night. Hell, I'll even go one step further for NXT. Match of the year. Why the fuck not? And at the same time, you know, you got to have Alistair get a win here. I think Alistair does need the win at the same time, though. Let's assume for a minute that Chomp, let's assume for a minute that Gargano wins. You can have Candice LeRae, who a couple of weeks ago, Alistair Black confronted in the ring. And keep this in mind, you know, um, freaking Candice LeRae had a new look, a darker look, if you will, right? When Alistair confronted her, you can have Candice LeRae get involved and have this whole thing where she helps Gargano get the win and they become a new heel couple, if you will. But again, we'll see what they go. But honestly, I'm going to go with Aleister Black getting his win here. And I don't think this is the end of the program. I think they're going to go probably to another takeover, maybe take over for Rumble Weekend in Arizona. But we'll see. We'll fucking see how that goes as well. Now, the last two matches, again, it's the War Games match, and it's also Ciampa and Velveteen Dream. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I think the match after this will be Tommaso Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream. I don't, I don't see the War Games going on before the championship match. I think the, the War Game match should close the show, in my honest opinion. But we have Tamala Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream for the NXT Championship. Can we just say this? I think all of us have been enjoying Tamala Ciampa as champion. One of the best things that happened on the show. The fact that he comes out there, he treats the belt like a person. He talks to the belt. All the belts is this, the belts is that. How he's been savage as well. How the belt is now headlining shows and shit like that. 
honestly, I don't see this match head main eventing the show. But at the same time, Velveteen Dream, every single time you see him, he always tears it up. He always has those match of the nights as well. And this could also be a match of the night caliber. You know what I mean? I did say, oh, Gargano and Black can definitely be the match of the night. So can Ciampa and Velveteen Dream. It's crazy to think, right? These past takeovers, the main event's always been Gargano and Ciampa. Gargano and Ciampa. This is the first takeover in a long time where the main event is not Samala Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. But they're still, in some way, shape, or form, referencing their feud, in a way. If you get what I'm saying. That being said, this match, again, you know... The whole time, Velveteen Dream wants his opportunity. He wants to, again, you know, I guess, end the dream of Tamala Ciampa being champion. This past, like, was it last week on NXT, he had this whole thing where it was Velveteen Dream and Lars Sullivan and, and Ciampa got involved. And then Velveteen Dream did the uh, the Raymaker elbow drop off the top rope to Tamala Ciampa to get momentum. All that being said, I just, again, I think people would love to see Velveteen Dream as champion. Why the hell not? But at the same time, I just don't see happening right now. I don't see Ciampa dropping the belt right now. It would be a shock if they if that happened. But I do see Tamala Ciampa retaining. And I'll go one step further. I see Velveteen Dream, when it's all said and done, even in defeat, he makes his way to the main roster. Because you got to believe in the back of your mind, too. There's going to be main roster call-ups. So why not Velveteen Dream? We've been hearing this for months that, oh, there's a possibility that Velveteen Dream may be making his way to the main roster after the Survivor Series. So why the fuck not? You know, put him on SmackDown Live or maybe Monday Night Raw. What do you guys think about that? Velveteen Dream, Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live? Give me your thoughts down below in the comment threads on that. But I do see Tommaso Ciampa getting the win and retaining and being hashtag and still the NXT champion. We then go on to the main event. We go on to the main event. We get the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong versus Pete Dunne, who is the NXT UK champion, or the WWE, or the WWE UK champion, Ricochet, who is the North American champion, and the War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe, in the War Games match. Now, if you guys watched NXT this past Wednesday, Kyle O'Reilly, with help of the Undisputed Era, did beat, um, he did beat Hanson, which... Be, for the win, the Undisputed Era will have a one-man advantage in the War Games per entry. So, all that being said, all the tension, there was that brawl a couple weeks ago where they were brawling outside of Full Sail in the ring and all that. This match is going to be fucking insane. The fact that it's the War Games match, it's the, it's the two ring, the giant cage, all that crazy stuff. If you thought what happened last year was insane, even though I thought, again, last year was insane as it was, I part of me doesn't think it'll this match will top that. But they're going to try. They're going to fucking try. And that's what I think is cool about NXT at some, in some point, in some weird way, okay? I, I see Ricochet doing some crazy dive on top of the cage. I see Adam Cole probably taking a crazy bump. Uh, probably the War Raiders, probably hands in a row in the freaking key like Killian Dane did last year. But we'll see all that shit go down again. As far as the winner goes, you know, yeah, last year the Undisputed Era did pick up the win. Um, you could definitely go with the same route again, but at the same time, uh, I would love to see, you know, Pete Dunne and Ricochet and the World Raider get the win here. And I would love to see someone like Pete Dunne pick up the W, or if not, Adam Cole get pinned by Ricochet. I wouldn't mind seeing that either. At the same time, you know what I wish they did here too? Whoever got the, whoever got the win here, can choose a title match of their choosing for the future. That should be like a perk, like a, an award, if you will, a reward, if you will, whoever gets the win for their team, some shit like that. But that being said, I'm going to go with, and I, I could be wrong on this. Again, I could be wrong. I guarantee people in the comments, bro, you're so off these predictions. It's fine. It is what it is. I do see Ricochet, Pete Dunn, and the Warrior picking up the W. But again, it should be a fun match. It should be a fun show. One more thing I'm going to say as well. A part of me wishes they would have added Cassius Ono versus Matt Riddle to the show. I get why they didn't do it. I get why. Because, again, you want to give more time to the to the War Games match. And, again, you want people to tune in Wednesday night for NXT. The post, if you will, War Games show. And it's also a match for the people that are there live in the building in L.A. to see the match, what have you. And I guarantee you they'll tear it up, too. But, again, if, if that match was on the main on this card, bruh, it would have been over. Just saying. 
But as always, Mother Flower, give me your thoughts down below in the comment thread of this video. Your thoughts on TakeOver War Games 2 2018. Who do you see winning these matches? As always, give me your thoughts. Let me, or, not, let me, or not let me know on Twitter, at HeelSteven. By the way, tomorrow, like I said, I will be doing the Team L podcast live here on the channel. Again, myself, Big Mike. Maybe okay, Fabe. We'll see. We'll be doing our Survivor Series predictions live on the air. We'll be taking your live calls. And as well, we'll be doing a giveaway. So make sure you tune in tomorrow night. Make sure you sub to the channel. And you listen to the show live for the giveaway and all that fun stuff. Because, again, who does not want to win f some free stuff? I'm just saying, okay? Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Thank you for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up. Share this video throughout your entire social media, Mother Flowers. So why the fuck would you not? And until next time, Mother Flowers, it's me, it's Steve, and it's wrestling and whatever. Peace out, Mother Flowers. I'm just saying right now, yo, I'm going to smoke so much weed this weekend for both TakeOver and fucking Survivor Series. I cannot fucking wait, yo, seriously. Maybe I'll have that Becky Lynch aura to me being the fucking man. We'll fucking see. <laughs>